Joining me now is Rod Blagojevich, the former governor of Illinois, former attorney. He was impeached, removed over abuse of power charges before he was arrested. Blagojevich served nearly eight years of a 14-year sentence before his sentence was commuted by President Trump, and he's maintained his innocence. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. So George Santos, you know, has a, a habit of tweeting about distractions, et cetera. You know, how do you think he should be handling a situation like this with the feds and all these local investigations seem to be closing in. Well, yes, and thank you very much for pointing out that I, to this day, continue to insist on my innocence. I didn't break a law across the line or take a penny. It was all politics. No one said I even took any money. Having said that, hmm. what that gentleman in that clip that you just showed talked about seems to be a very serious and meaningful potential uh, prosecution. and could very well be some crimes involved. So you're asking me, what's it like to be under that kind of a microscope? Well, it ain't no beach party. Uh, you feel like your world is closing in. It's a time of great anxiety and fear. And your hope is that the people that are investigating you are honest people and are going to look for real crimes and not invent crimes when they can't find any. I had faith in the system. I learned the hard way that it's not always honest. They can't try you. They can't convict you at a first trial. They try you at a second time. In this particular case, it's early on. And I know that Congressman Santos is a, kind of a very easy punching bag. He's now being called a political Pinocchio and all the rest. And he certainly has told a lot of what appears to be tall tales. But he, like all of us, is entitled to a presumption of innocence. What I hear and what I see doesn't look good. Um, but, you know, I think he's going through a real hard time, and I think he needs to focus on, you know, taking stock of what he knows the truth to be, if and, he can and, find it. And what, what do you think, I mean, if someone was asking him for advice on sort of, what do I do now? And, you know, look, you can use your legal, you know, yeah. your legal background, you can use your experience, whatever you so choose. You know, what do you say to a guy like this who's in this position where all these different um, prosecutor's offices all want a piece of him at this right. point? What do you tell him to do? I tell him this. I say, ask yourself, my friend, did you do it or didn't you do it? If you did it, be responsible for what you did, cut your losses, be truthful and honest and remorseful, seek redemption, and, uh, and then pay your debt to society. If you didn't do it, then don't let these people bully you and force you into saying something you didn't do. Fight. It really comes down to that. Now, if you fight, and if they rig the system and you don't win and you don't get a fair shot, you're going to pay a price, as I did. Uh, but I think you have to be honest with yourself first and foremost. And based on the different information we have about this congressman and the tall tales and all the other things he says, I don't know that he's and, capable of that. And I, and I think your situation very different in the sense that you had real supporters even as they were coming after you. This feels like a situation where he's got really almost no one on his side, right? Yes, well, yes, it does. And, uh, you know, again, I think so many of the different things he's alleged to, he claims that he has, he's been involved in, they're comical. And, uh, and as a result, I don't think there's, he has much credibility. So if there's a way for him to be able to be honest with himself first and then recognize what the, the truth of the matter is, he would know whether or not he was swindling those, that, that gentleman and that, that uh, uh, pet program. He would know if he did it or not. If he did it, take stock of it and it, accept the responsibility. If you didn't do it, though, as I said, I think you have to stand up for what you know the truth to be. And if they're trying to say that you did something you didn't do, then you should fight to the end. Yeah, um, no. Look, but again, it, go ahead. He, he's in a whole bunch of hot water. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is in a whole bunch of hot water here. And I think it's also the campaign finance stuff as to where he got all that money, right? To, I mean, that's a real problem. You know, Dan, I spent eight years sheltering in place in prison for what I said was politics, not crimes, political conversations that President-elect Obama started when he sent an emissary to me to make a political deal. Neither one of us did anything wrong. It's politics. They criminalized it in my case. But in those eight years, I spent a lot of time with a lot of different inmates, federal inmates. I was in prison for the first 32 months with men that committed murder, bank robbers, drug dealers, and throughout the eight years, con men, con artists. Mm -hmm. And there's a quality that these con artists have that remind me of this man. And I hate to say that, I don't want to judge him because I know he's in deep trouble and yep. I don't want to prejudge somebody after all the things that I went through myself. Yep. Having said that, when they lie yep. like they do, they make up these big stories like they do, the next step is to cheat somebody, okay. which may have happened here, maybe Sorry. not. Got to wrap it. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it, Banfield starts. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below 
to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.